truth has finally come on the Shane Van Stein. You are the mayor of Geraldton. But I hear you're also the mayor of the Abrolhos Islands. I absolutely. A few years ago, we uh, made the Abrolhos Islands part of the city of Greater Geraldton, and who wouldn't want to be mayor of their own set of islands? I love it. Now, you're pretty excited. You're telling me out there it is special. Oh, mate, it's a world class, the southernmost coral reef system in the world, one of the two most biodiverse uh, spots on Earth, behind the Galapagos Islands, I believe. But you're going to see some fishing out there, craze, you're going to see wildlife beyond your wildest dreams. So much to do out there, and it's going to be an absolutely ripping trip. He's pumping it up, but I've heard it's good, and I can't wait. Hey going, I'm Chris McDonald, this is Kobe McDonald. We're just gonna go out the back of the camp, pull some pots with Paul and Shane and get some craze for lunch. The incredible thing about a brolis is you don't have to travel very far to catch anything. And these crayfish are literally just on the back of the ledge, off the island we slept that last night. In fact, you can catch craze right under the boat where we slept last night. Our pot. And yes, the Abrolis is the crayfish capital of the world. Look at them. Good work, boys. So, how long has that pot actually been in? It's an overnight pool, that one. Overnight, and we've got how many crays? Half a dozen? Half a dozen to start. Not a bad, not a bad start. And why are you so excited, mate? That's my pot. Good lad, it's his pot. How many crays do you reckon might be in this one, mate? Probably like four or five. Four or five? I'm going to go for eight. What have we got? One, two, three, four. I think we might have ten. That's a good one, eh? Yeah. There's at least ten crayfish in that pot and it's only been in overnight. caught these crays recreationally. What are the laws regarding that? Absolutely, so a cray's got to be 76 millimetres from the tip of his horns to the end of the carapace. As you can see, well and truly sized. He is sized. Now that one there, I don't think we need the uh, measure for that, do we? Probably not going to bother the gauge. <laughs> so what else do we have to do? Do we have to do something in relation to cutting the tail? So once they're recreational catch, we're required to remove the middle fin. Oh. Just simply tear him off, Yep. And he's good to go. And now, that we know that's been caught recreationally, so it can't be sold. Absolutely. What a simple technique to look after this fishery. Interesting fact, behind me stands a monument to the HMAS Sydney, lost at sea. On it, 645 silver goals. Each one represents one of the men that were lost. We're about to start trolling for coral trout. I've put an old faithful, this thing never lets me down. Oh, he's on. Yep. I've got him up. Well, that took all of about less than a minute. And we managed to stop this fish pretty good. There's a fish behind him too. A fish just followed him up. He's going back down now. And this looks like a nice trout. I'm just trying to keep his head up. What have we got there? Yep, beautiful. Nice coral trout. That's a beautiful fish. Look at that. A magnificent coral trout now. The unique thing about trout, their colour varies so much fish to fish. There's plenty of different species in the trout family, referred to as a grouper overseas. 
We call them trout, not like rainbows or browns. These are one of the tasty things on the planet. I can see a lot of confused people on this boat because I'm about to put a coral trout back. do is get my rod tip as low as possible which allows my lure to dive deeper. It's a shallow diving rapala and I just want it to get as deep as I physically can. And the reason I'm wriggling it like this, more wobble, more gobble. Oh yeah baby! That's nice! This is almost like American bass fishing. You gotta keep them up. <laughs> gotta keep the trout up nice he's, and high. Hey, surf, and you're doing well. What have we got? I think you might have a trout. Yeah, you got a trout. Now, I told you to believe in that lure, didn't I? <laughs> I doubted you. I doubted oh. you. But, Look uh, at that. It's beautiful. Swing it over. Watch those hooks. And there he goes. And that, I reckon, for me, that is the perfect trout because, well, I don't know. If it's legal size, but if it was, if it was, if it was, I would just roll that in a bit of flour, cook it whole, an Asian sauce, and that would be the sweetest thing on the planet, wouldn't it? Well, look, absolutely. There's some parts of all that is exactly what they'd be doing, but he might be saved the frying pan today. I think this one's going <laughs> back. Now, can I set you a challenge? What have you got? Is there any chance next trout you catch could be bigger than your lure? <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Trout is going back. Woo! Away he went. How's the way this disappeared and hit that coral? It's gone. over the reef and the trouble is to get the better bites you've got to drop it back further don't you mate absolutely mate. i'll get my get myself out of the way you're for all you. good now you were just saying this place is no secret we've seen a few boats go past but the fish just keep coming don't they like there's plenty to go around well look we don't want to tell people that too often of course but uh absolutely lots of fish to go around for it is life. just crazy and what's blowing me away most about this place is the crayfish they literally are almost like underwater rabbits aren't they well look, we use them for bait now, do not say that on television. <laughs> Is it true that you once fed your dog crayfish? I do, I feed my pooch Bella crayfish all the time because, you know, they so much crayfish a man can eat. What little respect I had for you is now gone. <laughs> now, here's our fish, what do we got here? Bring it up. Oh, it's a beautiful trout. It's a lovely fish and he scoffed that lure. I'll try and lift him. That is what you call a super coral trout. Just a beautiful fish. Look at those spots. Now, all coral trout are actually born female. Scientists don't know why, but a certain size actually changes the male. And these things live to about 16 years of age. Yeah, there you go. And the other interesting fact, they're born, they hang around a rock, and they generally don't travel more than about 500 metres. So they're quite sedentary. A bit like us, just like to have their own little pad. Just hang out, just hang out for a little while. Just hang out. Well, guess what? This one might not be going home for dinner tonight, because I think you might be coming to our place, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I've just seen a friendly local. I'm going to jump in and say hello. now is to move into shallow water to chase bald chin groper. That means boat number three, a jet that can access those exact waters I'm talking about. Righto, Paul, we're about to fish for my favourite fish, bald chin groper. And the way we do it here in Geraldton, lobster for burley, the only weights you bait. Seriously, I've seen it all. 
I'm trying. <laughs> this is a better fish. He took it hard. And my hand line technique, what do you think of it, mate? <laughs> well, you're keeping him out of the coral. That's the most that's important thing. That's the most thing. important thing. It's not, it's not pretty. It's a nice baldy. What's he got? That's the oh, yes. There we're talking. That's what he wants. Seriously, what an epic fish. The blue in those fins matches the blue in the eye. And such a unique way to catch a fish, isn't it? Oh look, absolutely. Again, the only weight to bait, mate. You just—it's all about the feel. All about the feel. It's fishing. I'll tell you what. It's about the feel. I'm here to tell you that felt pretty damn good. Yep, it's a good one. It's a good one. I think it's a good one. As you can see, this ball is coming in thick and fast. This is a good fish. Oh, you really got to get that angle on him, don't you? Get right in. Don't let him go, oh, This is the most fun I've had in a long time. <laughs> this is reef. crazy. Get him on. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. How lucky is that, mate? A little ball to come along. You're all tied up, and then a monster comes along. That is just a beautiful fish, and I'm so in love with these things. Bald, chin, grope. And your reason that you can't hang on to them properly is because they've hardly fought. I've literally ripped this fish in green. I'll try and get him to show you. Look at that. What an incredible West Australian fish from the Abrolhos. Man, they pull. Good work. Oh, he's giving it to me. Good fish? Exactly, it's a good fish. Well done, mate. Oh, nice fish. Yeah, baby. I reckon that's the baldy of the day. What do you reckon? Now we're talking ghosties. That is, why do you call them ghosties? Yeah, because they're, well, <laughs> you'd think it was what they find and then they carry on, but uh, it's that grey colour that you're looking for in the baldies. Look at that. Um, but the bigger they get, the greyer they get. Uh, good luck with that. <laughs> I tried a lot of times. Uh, we'll get back to you in a second. <laughs> well, that is what you call a ball chin grey, but what a day we've had. Crayfish, coral trout, ball chin, is there anything else you could possibly deliver? Not much more today, mate, but we'll see what we can do a bit later on back at camp. I'm thinking a coldie, because we deserve it. How good are the Brolis Islands? Make sure you put them on your list.